This is Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. Around May 11, 2007, Coast to Coast AM webmaster Lex received an email letter with images dated around May 6, 2007 of a very odd aerial object shaped like a dragonfly from a central California resident who calls himself simply Chad. Chad wrote that he was worried about his family's safety and health since he has now seen this bizarre aerial object at least eight times from his house windows and on hikes near his home. Neighbors, he said, have also seen the unidentified object. Then on May 15th, I received another aerial drone image allegedly taken by a person at Lake Tahoe, California, on May 5th, 2007, and they identified themselves at ufocasebook.com as, quote, Lake Tahoe-050507 MUFON, Submitter 7013. A week later, on May 21st, 2007, someone calling themselves Rajman 1977 sent more images allegedly taken, this time in Capitola, California. The Capitola aerial object had projections off of its ring, unlike the Lake Tahoe or Chad images. Soon, all of the photographs from Chad in Central California, Lake Tahoe, and Capitola were being attacked as the work of Photoshop and or viral promotional films. But now I have interviewed a California resident who worked for the state government in the Department of Developmental Services in mental health for 25 years before recently retiring in 2006. Shirley was born in Ventura County, California, and earned her psychiatric technician degree from Ventura Community College in 1978. I have her full address, contact information, and academic background, but she has applied to work in another state agency, so she has asked to simply be identified as Shirley from the Central Valley of California. She does not want the chaos surrounding the images to affect her new employment, but she wants the public to know that the Chad photos match a dragonfly-like aerial object that she saw two years ago. In May 2005, she went on a weekend trip with her father to visit Sequoia National Park. Shirley and her father were near the center of the large Sequoia Park and Monument where they had planned to camp, but Shirley began feeling nauseous with a bad headache and decided that she needed to go home and rest. It was late afternoon between 3 and 5 p.m. when she realized she was lost and did not know what road to take out of the park. She had stopped at a park ranger station to ask a uniformed ranger for directions when she was shocked to see what looked like a big dragonfly moving in the sky. When Shirley saw Chad's photos at earthfiles.com and the Coast to Coast AM website, she recognized the object as what she had seen. It was like around May of 2005, and we'd gotten lost as to which road to take out of the Sequoias to get back on the right road heading home. I told Dad, I go, uh, pull over pull over at the station. I'm going to talk to this park ranger and see if uh, he can help us. Came over talking to this ranger, and while we were talking, this weird thing flew overhead. Never seen anything like it in my whole life. And I asked the park ranger, I go, what is that? And he just, you know, very casually, he just went, oh, he goes, yeah, you know, I'm told that it's uh, some kind of a communications device. It's supposed to uh, help the Park Service to monitor any possible problems, you know, fires and such. And that was pretty much his total explanation of what it was. Can you give as many details as possible? What I saw, the things that struck me right off the bat, the first was that it had a shape like nothing I've ever seen. The body of the thing looked to be like a circle, like a metal circle, but the things that body shape-wise that made it look so weird was the shape itself just, uh, for lack of a better description, reminded me of a dragonfly. It had an extended 
I'll call it an arm, for lack of a better word, a thin extension at the back, a circular body. It had like three or four shorter extensions. They were like between the side of the thing and the front of the thing. And it had these weird, like, wires that were coming out of the top of the thing, but you could tell that they were bent. They weren't straight. Mm -hmm. they, they were, like, curving. And, of course, I'd never seen anything shaped like that before that was flying around or otherwise. The second thing about it was just the way it moved. I mean, I, at first I thought, well, it reminds me of a helicopter, but it had a much smoother, quicker movement to it than what I've seen in any helicopter. And when I spotted the thing again later, we stopped again because we were still lost even after talking to the park ranger, and we uh, pulled over and talked to one of the road crews that were out there. They were doing a lot of road repair. And that's when I saw the thing again, and it was off further in the distance by that time. But it did give me a better chance to actually look at the way the thing itself moved. And that's when I could see that, because at one point the thing backed up. Hmm. And I just went, oh, look, it can go backwards just like a dang helicopter. Hmm. And then it just kind of reversed itself and headed off in another direction. And I thought, well, that's interesting. You know, that's a nifty contraption. Um, but it moves like, if you've ever sat there and watched a dragonfly over the water, right? just sat there for the fun and watched them, because they're a hoot. Nothing else moves like them. That's how this thing moved. The dragonfly, the way that they're able just to kind of hover, and they've got real mobility. Whatever direction they're going to point themselves at, they're going to go in no problem. The thing didn't move anything like, say, uh, an airplane. It moved. It had a mobility closer to what I've seen in a helicopter. I mean, that's the only other thing I can think of that I can liken it to in that kind of mobility. But it had a smoother move to it. Mm -hmm. It had a quicker, smoother move than what I've seen with a helicopter. Of the images that have been shared now on Earth Files and Coast to Coast and other websites from Lake Tahoe, from Chad in Central California, and from the Capitola, California images, which seems the very closest to what you saw in May of 2005? Oh, no doubt about that. The uh, Chad photos. The Chad photos are just about exactly what I saw that day in the park. And the others are different in what way? The Capitola photos, right away, I'm going, what is that thing that's sticking out of, projecting out from the uh, side of the circular main body? You know, it looked like two round apertures. And I don't remember round apertures sticking out of the side of what I saw that day. And I didn't notice them in the pictures Chad took either. That was a difference. But the rest of the uh, body on the Capitola pictures looks pretty much like what I saw that day. But Chad's photos were right on. I recall the longest extension moving like it was the tail of this craft. Again, much like when you'd see a dragonfly move. I mean, a dragonfly doesn't move with its tail to the front of it. You know, its tail follows it. The colors look just kind of a buff gray Okay. And could you see any numbers, letters, or designs? You know, I didn't. How high would you estimate this object was above the trees, and how big was it? Oh, if I just extended my arm straight out in front of me and used my fingers as an indication for how large that thing appeared in the sky... Mm -hmm. I'd say it looked like it was about as large, I'd say, between my first finger and my thumb. Yeah, between my first finger and my thumb size. Okay. But I, I wish I could say, like, that's 150 feet or 300 feet or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. All I can tell you is that where we were at, anyone knows, uh, the sequoias are a very high elevation. And the photos that I saw looked pretty low. I mean, goodness, one of them was taken no higher than a telephone pole, and the other ones were taken so low that the lettering of some kind seems to appear on at least one of the extension or arms on this thing, and you could almost make out the lettering. Right. So obviously it was flying a whole lot higher that day in the sequoias than it was 
in anything that's been photographed since. Okay. And in terms of any electrostatic humming or sound like chat? Uh-uh. I didn't hear a thing. That would be consistent with it being higher in elevation above you than above Chad. Oh, yeah. I'm sure of that. I'm positive that it was higher than how it appears in Chad's pictures. When you think back to that moment when you stopped to ask the Sequoia Park Ranger for directions, and this object moving in the sky so oddly catches your attention, Mm -hmm. and you ask the park ranger, what is that? Mm -hmm. Did he look up? I don't recall him looking up. I can recall him answering the question in a real, did not appear to be trying to hide anything or didn't seem to be the least bit surprised to be asked about it. Hmm. But no, I don't recall him stopping and pausing and focusing on what I was talking about. As if he knew exactly what was there. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't that peculiar since not any of the rest of us, no one has come forward to say, I know exactly what that is. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, now it does seem strange, but at the time it just didn't seem like a, it didn't set off any alarm bells. But when you saw the Chad photos at Coast to Coast and EarthFiles.com, what went through your mind immediately? When I looked at them, I just went, oh, wow, yeah, I remember that thing. I just thought, wow, isn't that interesting? We just keep coming up with better and better technology. I mean, that's honestly what I thought that day. I was like, I was impressed. I mean, I walked away, you know, kind of going, well, how nifty, you know. Isn't our government amazing? We're we're just coming up with bigger and better things all the time, you know. I mean, that's, that's honestly what I thought, and that's all I thought. I didn't walk away going, oh, my gosh, what are they trying to hide? You know, I just, I didn't. I mean, I just kind of walked away going, that's neat, you know. And that's because the Sequoia Park Ranger dismissed it so casually, right? Absolutely. I mean, if he'd looked startled or if he'd fumbled like, uh, 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 you know, like, like, you know, people will do sometimes when you catch them off guard. But uh, no, his demeanor and everything was nothing like that. He didn't act like it was anything to be concerned about. He didn't act like he was trying to hide anything. He didn't act like he was trying to come up with a good story, you know, nothing like that. If a park ranger would talk to you so casually about an object in the sky that none of us have ever seen before, he is privy to information that nobody else is privy to, which raises a question in my mind. Was he a Sequoia Park Ranger also doing double duty for another agency or the military? You know, Linda, yeah, I mean, all I had to go by was what I was told. And you know what? Anything's possible, Linda. And you see all of the controversy coming about it must be photoshopped, that all of these images must be photoshopped. What is your comment to viewers and listeners? Well, I can tell you right now that what I saw that day, that was not a Photoshop. I mean, I saw that in the real world. Since talking with Shirley, I have had email and phone discussions with park rangers, such as this note, quote, I have been a park ranger for 30 years, and I have never seen or heard of such a device. The Park Service can barely afford regular helicopters, much less highly secret craft like this. Signed, Carol McElhaney, Sacramento County Park Rangers, unquote. I also contacted Alexandra Pickovet in public information in the United States Department of Interior, Sequoia National Park Rangers Office in Tulare County. We discussed the images and Earth Files reports, and with her request, I sent her my May 15, 2007 Earth Files report that included the Chad images for her official comment. Since two federal agencies manage the park, Alexander Picavet also asked me to contact Denise Alonzo, Tule River District, U.S. Department of Agriculture, United States Forest Service, Giant Sequoia National Monument, and Sequoia National Forest Public Affairs Office. I did, had the same discussion, and also sent to her my Earth Files report for her official comment. 
Within a day, by phone, Denise Alonzo told me neither she nor anyone in her office had any knowledge or information about the object in the photos. I have now received yet another image allegedly photographed last year in May 2006 in Birmingham, Alabama, of a similar dragonfly-shaped object hovering above a power line near a construction site. The eyewitness and photographer says that he works for the military as a subcontractor and has asked for confidentiality to protect his job. After he took the photograph, he had work to do in the vicinity but returned to the intersection to see if the aerial object was still there. It was not, but parked nearby were two pickup trailer rigs that stood out as very clean and shiny next to the dirty, dusty construction site. He sent me a second photograph of one of the all-white pickup trailer units that has no markings on it at all, with cable stretching from the trailer next to a power pole. Then on May 30th, I received another email from a professional engineer who has also requested anonymity. He is confident that the dragonfly-shaped aerial object photographed by Mr. Smith in Birmingham, Alabama in May 2006 is nearly identical to an approximately 25-foot-long display model in a Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana air show that he attended on or about 1987. Here is his email. I've been studying the various images of these odd aerial drones, when the latest picture posted from Birmingham, Alabama, caught my attention. I was immediately overcome with the damnedest feeling that I had seen this exact drone before, but not in the air, instead on the ground and up close. I thought I had seen it in some sort of static display or something with people around it, and then I remembered. I saw this thing in a hangar at Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana, at one of the open house air shows around 20 or so years ago. It was a static display mounted on a dolly or cart, and there were people around, that is, some visitors to the air show. It was a display by some major aerospace contractor, I forget who. A number of us had wandered into the open hangar and were just standing there looking at it and at some of the other displays. I think there were some air-to-air missiles. There were about three or four hangars with public displays, and this one, or so we all thought, was one of them. I do have a vague recollection of somebody official coming out there and telling a couple of the Air Force guys that the unit was not supposed to be out on public display. Apparently, it was meant for display to military personnel only, and they needed to get this out of sight. The military guys then ran everybody, including me, out of the hangar and closed the doors. I don't remember what the thing was called, but it was some kind of surveillance or intelligence-gathering drone. I don't see why they thought that they had to run us out of the hangar, but of course I respected their notion of security. I didn't see what the big deal was about some funny-looking ring gadget. Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week, for new reports and new podcasts. That's www.earthfiles.com.